she descended, her armor more radiant than the sun. With a kiss on the face of fallen warriors, she guides their souls to Valhalla. Even atop snow-covered mountains, curses creep powerfully against her unyielding will. Like a raging fire, her soul is ablaze. Your undead visage shall receive my kiss. What's up everyone? Since IgG released another hero during patch 1.3, I'll hold off on the patch 1.3 individual tier list to cover the new SSR Luminarch fighter Brynhild. For anyone who is keeping track of the SSR heroes, the Luminarch faction previously had 12 heroes, Shadow Arc and Verdian had 13, and Guardian had 14. Now Luminarch has 13. Brynhild devotes her whole skill set to damage output, so she should be considered a glass cannon like Artemis. Let's summarize her skills. Quadruple Harmony is her ultimate skill. It deals massive AoE damage to the enemy team and allows her to deal extra damage with her follow-up auto attacks. Brynhild has one active and two passive skills. On the website, it says Arms Mastery is an active skill, but the in-game and proper description says the skill is a passive one. She switches between four different weapons, each with their own effects. One thing to note is her level 4's upgrade, which lets her bow auto-attack stun an enemy for two seconds. Wings of Retribution is Brynhild's one active skill, which gives her breathing room by both knocking close enemies back and generating a shield for her. Now that we've seen her auto attack and active skills, let's see how much energy they provide. Credit goes to Rascal Jackal for data gathering. Brynhild's auto attacks generate 120 hit energy while Wings of Retribution generates 180. Pursuit of Perfection is her second passive skill. For each of her four types of auto attacks, it further enhances her damage output by increasing her attack, physical cleave, and overall damage dealt. For her equipment, there are two good sets to use. Axe of Pangu with Lightning Runes focuses on maximizing her auto attack damage. Sudoshana's Chakra with Dark Runes focuses on increasing her nuke ultimate skills damage and activating it as fast as possible. Her divinity skill set is good. For her starting two nodes, equip Culmination and Vexation. For three nodes, switch Vexation for toxicity. For four nodes, add vexation back in. If your divinity tree is leveled a month, you can remove the tier 1 skills and equip time lapse. For five nodes, equip death waiver and choose between toxicity and time lapse. For six nodes, switch the tier 2 skill for excitement. For 7 nodes, there are two options, Culmination, Death Waver, and Excitement for her ultimate skill build, or Toxicity, Time Lapse, and Death Waver for her auto attack build. Her iconic weapon attributes are focused on her high damage. Her Chimera attribute is Accuracy, and it maxes at 108 which is slightly below average. Her Bahu attribute 
maxes at the highest 150. Her Anka attribute maxes at 114, which is close to, but still below average. Her Genbu attribute maxes at 96, which is far below average. Her Drago attribute maxes at 132, which is above average. For her Iconic Weapon 2 nodes, roll for offensive attributes like Physical Cleave, Attack Percentage, Accuracy, Crit Chance, and Crit Damage. Still, getting the Defensive Attribute Health Percentage is fine since she has a high Health Percentage base. For the node colors, choose either yellow or green. Yellow is better for PvE since it maximizes her damage further, while green is better for PvP since she can be killed quickly before she can use her ultimate skill due to her lack of survival skills. Her iconic weapon skills improve her Pursuit of Perfection passive skill and her ultimate skill. Iconic weapon 100 to 400 adds crit chance slash damage and auto attack speed bonuses for each type of weapon used. Iconic weapon 500 increases her accuracy after her first ultimate skill use. Iconic weapon 600 gives her a 50% chance to continue using the Valkyrie Plume auto attack buff from her ultimate. Not a great Iconic Weapon 600, but it's good if she has an auto attack build. Her performance in PvE is good. In campaign battles, she excels as a DPS hero because her ultimate skill performs well when there is an enemy team. Against bosses, her DPS performance is still good. Even though her ultimate is better against multiple targets and she likely won't use Wings of Retribution, her culmination and toxicity divinity skills, combined with her passive skills, improve her damage against single targets. Her performance in Crusade is not as good as PvE. Although she has high damage against multiple targets and would make a good solo path hero, her, div her main divinity is not Asterial, which everyone knows is the best divinity for that event. Her performance in PvP looks to be good. Since she is a high damage fighter with little survival, she can go into the Ninersag meta team. Aside from that team, players without Ninersag can use Brynhild in the Odin team's front line. In summary, her strengths are high damage, good divinity skills, and usefulness in both PvE and PvP. Her weaknesses are her lack of survival skills and her lack of usefulness in Crusade. Now, I can release a patch 1.3 individual tier list after this. Thanks for listening.